In the midst of adversity, we can experience Christ's grace, strength, and power. Christ's grace gives us what we could never have on our own, what we do not deserve. Christ's strength enables us to go beyond ourselves. We can live independent of our circumstances. Christ's power works through us the supernatural, doing things only God can do. The pandemic has created numerous challenges and adverse situations for everyone. As believers, our response to the pandemic is not one of fear, panic, hopelessness or despair. We draw on Christ's grace, strength and power. We serve others with Christ's grace, strength and power. We overcome with Christ's grace, strength and power. All right. Today, um, we are going to spend time in the Word of God. And uh, I just want to bring a very uh, simple message uh, to us. I want to talk to us a little bit on strength in adversity and uh, in order to bring uh, specific insights to us, uh, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. Uh, we will read this passage first, and then we will draw uh, some insights from this passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. The Apostle Paul is saying, And lest... I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul says, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, this probably is a familiar passage uh, to many of us uh, you know, we've read about this, we've heard sermons on it, on, uh, on Paul's thorn in the flesh. But let's make a few remarks. And uh, the focus today is not on Paul's thorn, neither is it on, uh, you know, uh, the uh, difficulties he was going through. But I want to focus on three things which God said, you know, Paul, this is available to you in the midst of what you're going through. So what was Paul going through? Now, we all know the background or the context of what Paul is speaking of, uh, he's this man to whom God has given this abundance of revelations. In fact, earlier in that chapter, in chapter 12, he talks about um, uh, being caught up to the third heaven and into the very paradise of God. And he heard the things uh, that God spoke to him. So it's a, an unusual uh, life and experience that Paul had to receive these revelations, which of course he wrote down for us as part of the New Testament. So the things he received, he received from God directly uh, as he received this revelation. And so he says, you know, because of all the abundance of revelations that was given to me, um, he says, you know, there was this thorn in the flesh. So a thorn in the flesh is an idiom. It's uh, like how in English we have idioms, we have phrases. Um, uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean literally, it's, it's always meant figuratively. So in English, when we say it's raining cats and dogs, it doesn't mean cats and dogs are falling from the sky. It's just a phrase. It's an idiom. Uh, it's, it's something that represents something. So Paul is saying, I've got a thorn in the flesh. Now, what is a thorn in the flesh? Paul explains it's a messenger of Satan. That word messenger simply means a, a being. And in this case, an angelic being, a, a being from Satan. So obviously, is referring to a demon spirit or a demonic being that came repeatedly against Paul, against his work, against his ministry. And Paul described a lot of this in chapter 11 and the hardship that he went through. And he repeats that in verse 10. He says, you know, I've gone through distresses and hardships and weaknesses and so on. So this thorn in the flesh obviously is not some sickness or disease, but it's this continuous repeated opposition from this demonic being, a messenger of Satan, that kept on coming against Paul. So, you know, everywhere Paul went, he knew that this demonic being was trying to hinder him and oppose his ministry. 
Uh, and Paul recognized what was happening. So he prays to God and, and he wants God. He prays and says, God, just take this demonic being away. Take this messenger of Satan away. I don't want this. I don't want him to keep on opposing me. And uh, and so God doesn't take the devil away. It's like you and me praying, God, you know, make the devil stop tempting us. No, see, as long as you are in the earth, the devil is around, Satan is around, and his demons are around, and they're going to keep coming to tempt you, you and me. So you and I can't just say, God, take the devil away. And, no, uh, there are things God has given to us by which we resist the devil so he will flee, right? Uh, so in this context, as Paul prays and says, God, uh, you know, he prayed three times. He says, God, you know, get rid of this messenger of Satan that's coming against me repeatedly, uh, this demonic being. What does God tell Paul? And that's what I want to focus on. God is saying, Paul, my grace, my strength, my power. That's what you need to focus on. My grace, my strength, and my power. And so Paul, out of he speaks to God about this, his whole view of this situation changes. Instead of focusing on the messenger of Satan, or instead of focusing on what things this messenger of Satan was doing, the hardships, the distresses, the tribulations, the weaknesses, the challenges, instead of focusing on that, Paul shifted his focus on three things. And that is what you and I must do in the midst of adversity. You see, as we journey through life, there will be adversity. There will be difficulties. There will be challenges. Uh, there will be things that are not so pleasant. And uh, right now, uh, especially those of us in India are going through uh, adversity, We're going through difficulty uh, because of the pandemic and sometimes the outcomes of that. People have lost jobs. Uh, there are a lot of other kinds of difficulties that have come because of that. And so in the midst of this adversity, which all of us are facing, where can we get strength to journey and overcome? Well, we learn something here from the Apostle Paul. Instead of focusing on the cause of the adversity, or instead of focusing on the adversities themselves, as all the problems, the challenges, focus on these three things that are available to you as a believer in Jesus Christ. What do you focus on? Focus on Christ's grace, focus on Christ's strength, and focus on Christ's power that's available to you and me. So in the middle of adversity, we, you and I, as believers, talk about grace, talk about Christ's strength, and talk about Christ's power. And I want to just you know, expand on these three things a little bit, and then we are going to close and pray together. So Christ's grace in the midst of adversity, in the midst of difficulties, what does grace do? Uh, now, the word grace in the New Testament is used in several different ways. And I just want to bring our attention to two uh, of the ways in which the word grace is used. Grace represents a divine empowering and, or enablement. Uh, uh, and grace, of course, also means divine favor. So when Christ's grace is made available to us, that means by grace, there is favor, there is divine favor. Because of his grace, there is divine enabling that comes over our lives. So in the middle of adversity, what might I look for? God, I thank you that you give me grace. And you give me grace equal and more than equal to the demands of my situation. So the, the situations are adverse, they're difficult, they're challenging, troublesome, hard. Uh, sometimes uh, they are crushing, sometimes they are draining, or whatever effect they're having on you. The grace of Christ that is available to you will give you favor and enablement. And you and I must draw on that grace. So say, Lord, I ask you for grace. I know this is hard. I know this is challenging. I know this is very difficult. And I feel the pressure. I feel be like being crushed. But God, give me grace. Give me grace. And what does grace do? It'll bring into your life things that you don't deserve. That's favor. 
It'll bring into your life things that you do not have. That's favor. So the grace of God brings favor into your life. Maybe it's a workplace situation and you say, God, I need your grace now. Maybe it's a financial situation. God, I need your grace now. And the grace of God will cause his favor to come upon you for you to receive what you do not have, for you to uh, have uh, what you don't even deserve. God will bring that to you because of grace. And that grace enables you. That means you say, God, I thank you for giving me grace in this situation to rise up to this situation, to do what needs to be done. It may be beyond my ability, but your grace empowers me. Your grace enables me to rise up and meet the demands of the situation. So you and I pray and ask God for grace. Now, here's one very important secret about grace. There is more grace available, but the Bible says God gives grace to the humble. So there is more grace. That means you can have more grace than what you have experienced right now. There is more. The, the grace of God is unending. It's infinite. If you say, oh, you know, I've experienced a lot of grace. Wonderful. There's more for you and me to experience. So we can ask God for more grace. But the Bible tells us very clearly, God gives grace to the humble. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. What is humility? Humility is not self-depreciation. It's not you saying, I'm worthless, I'm useless, I'm good for nothing. That is, that is not humility. Humility is utter dependence. It's coming to a place of being utterly dependent on God. Now, when you, are, when you and I are in that place of being utterly dependent on God, that's when we're really humble. Humble means I'm moving away from self-dependence to God-dependence. That's a place of humility. That you step down, you step intentionally into that place. Like the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3, he said, you know, uh, we do have no confidence in the flesh. Now think about the Apostle Paul. He was highly qualified, highly educated. Uh, he had everything, but he still didn't put his confidence in his own abilities. He cho chose to put his dependence on God. And that is true humility. And every time we come into that place of humility, God gives more grace. So how do we draw on the grace of God? How do we receive more grace into our lives by becoming more dependent, coming to a place of greater dependence on God and saying, God, I am dependent on you. I am I, counting on you. I'm not depending on my abilities, my strength, my own um, intellectual abilities. Oh God, but I'm depending on you. And that will cause grace to be poured out on our lives because he gives more grace to the humble. So we draw on the grace of God in adversity. And the grace of God gives us what we do not have. The grace of God brings into our life what we do not deserve. The grace of God enables us to rise beyond our highest abilities. That is what grace will do for you and me in the midst of adversity. So Christ's grace. Secondly, we see in this passage, what Paul has learned to do is to Christ is to lean upon Christ's strength. So, you know, uh, obviously, as, he is, as he's facing adversity, as he's facing this messenger of Satan coming against him over and over, Paul says, I can't take this anymore. I, I don't have strength to keep fighting these battles. I don't have strength to keep resisting the devil. I don't have strength to hold my shield up anymore. I don't have strength to keep you know, using the, the sword of the spirit. And we come, and all of us feel like that. We come to the end of ourselves and we say, this one got to get the matter over with. But God is saying, look, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That means when you come to the place where you feel like, God, I don't have any more strength. I'm weak. I don't have any more strength to keep running or keep walking. I don't have any more strength to keep fighting. I don't have any more strength to keep pushing. I don't have any more strength to stand up against all these things that I'm facing. God is saying, my strength, my strength is made complete in your weakness. That means when you have nothing left, all the strength of God flows in and empowers you to be more than enough for that situation. So in adversity, the second thing you and I must learn to do is to draw on Christ's strength. And you and I are all familiar 
with Philippians 4.13, where the Apostle Paul says, you know, uh, in, whatever, in, in whatever situation uh, I am in, I have learned to be uh, content. And some word, I think one version puts it as, in whatever situation I'm in, I've learned to be independent of my circumstances. That means my circumstances do not dictate who I am or how I will behave or how I will conduct myself. In whatever situation I am in, whether in plenty or in lack, in, in good times, hard times, my circumstances do not dictate who I am. I've learned to be independent of my circumstances. And in that context, he says mm, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That means regardless of my circumstances, I can be what Christ wants me to be. I can do everything God wants me to do in those circumstances. Why? Because of his strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. His strength enables me to do his will regardless of my circumstances. I'm independent of my circumstances. So that's how you and I must learn to look at ourselves. That our circumstances do not dictate who we are, how we behave, how we conduct ourselves, what we do. No, we do all things. We do the will of God by the strength he gives us. So what does the strength of God help you to do in the middle of adversity? It helps you to do all things God wants you to do. So in the middle of adversity, when you and I feel like giving up, when you and I feel like I can't take this anymore, we say, God, thank you that your strength is made perfect in my weakness. Your strength will enable me to do what you've called me to do independent of my circumstances because I'm strengthened by God in the middle of adversity. So learn to draw strength from God. How do we do that? Just pray to God. I ask you for strength. Strengthen me, God. Lord, you are the strength of my life. You are my light and my salvation. Lord, you are my strength. Strengthen me, O oh God. Now, one of the ways that you want to learn to strengthen ourselves is to pray in tongues, to pray in the Holy Spirit. So what, what does praying in tongues have to do with this? Praying in tongues, and let me put it in very simple terms, it's a God-given mechanism for us to recharge our strength. We're talking about spiritual strength. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4. He who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. So when you pray in tongues, what are you doing? You are edifying, you are recharging, you are strengthening your inner man. So that's one of the ways by which we draw strength. I'm not saying that's the only way. That's one of the ways by which we draw strength from Christ. We draw upon Christ's strength so that in the middle of adversity, we will still be able to do all things that God wants us to do. So you pray in tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues. And as you pray in tongues, your inner man is strengthened. Your inner man is renewed and you find strength to do all things that God wants you to do. We, of course, we draw strength through his word. The word of God quickens us. The word of God strengthens us. So you feed upon his word. Take time to feed upon his word. Even if it's one scripture, you meditate on that word. It's a source of life and strength to you. And that energizes you, that, that strengthens you so that you can do all things that God wants you to do in the middle of adversity. So what must we focus on in the middle of adversity? Number one, focus on Christ's grace. Number two, focus on Christ's strength. And thirdly, Paul says, the power of Christ may rest on me. That means in the middle of adversity, he's focusing on the fact that the power of Christ. Christ's power is resting on him. For what purpose? In order to be demonstrated through him, in order to be released through him, so that even though he's facing hardships, even though he's facing adversity, the ministry work gets done because it's Christ's power working through him. It's Christ's power that's healing the sick through him, that's delivering uh, people are oppressed, that is causing churches to be planted, that is causing believers to be strengthened, that is causing the work of God to continue in spite of adversity because it's Christ's power 
flowing through him. What does Christ's power flowing through you and me do? It causes the work of God to take place. It causes the supernatural to take place. What you and I cannot do by our own abilities, what you and I cannot do by our own uh, efforts, Christ's power does through us, even in the middle of adversity. So when you and I are facing adversity, that's not the time to turn your engine off and say, okay, I cannot do anything now. Why? Because of difficult difficulties. No, that's a time to keep going. Keep your engine on. Keep going. Why? Because it's Christ's power that's going to flow through you. You keep in tune with God. You keep yourself charged up with God. You depend on his grace. You strengthen yourself in his strength and let his power flow through you. Are there adversities? Yes. Are there difficulties? Yes. Are there challenges? Yes. But none of that should stop the power of God from from flowing through you because his, his power is going to go through you regardless of those adversities, the difficulties. None of the difficulties, none of the challenges can stop the flow of Christ's power through you by his Holy Spirit. So don't turn your engine off. Don't stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going in the middle of adversity. So I want to encourage you this morning. You see, all of us will face all kinds of adversities. And there will be seasons of adversities. There will be seasons of difficulties and there will be great seasons, wonderful times. Yes. But in good times and bad times, never forget Christ's grace, Christ's strength, and Christ's power is always available to you as a believer. Learn to tap into it. Learn to draw into it. Learn to be a person of faith that in the worst situation, you will move in the grace of God. You will be empowered by his strength and you will demonstrate his power. That no situation around you can stop you from doing that. That nothing that hell can try to bring against you can stop you from moving in the grace of God and the strength of God and the power of God. Because Jesus said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. It's more than enough than anything the devil can do against you. And it's Christ's power that's released through you in every situation. So be strengthened today. Remember that there is strength in adversity. Strength for you and me to overcome. Strength for you and me to keep going. Strength for you and me to be a blessing to other people. Strength for you and me to lift others up even if we are being crushed. There is strength for you and me to uh, help others even when we are challenged. But there is strength that's available to you and me to uh, so bring solutions to the people's lives even when you and I are facing complex challenges. Not, don't let anything stop you. Keep going through your worst adversity. Keep being a blessing because of Christ's grace, Christ's strength, and Christ's power. We're going to pray. We're going to let our worship team just lead us in a few moments of worship. I'm going to come back and we're going to pray together. And may each one of us experience the touch of the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus Let's break every chain, break every chain, break every chain to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
Father, thank you for this time together. I pray for every person who's connected to this program right now, to this service. God, whatever time or whenever they're watching, or wherever they're watching from, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will bring encouragement into their hearts. That right now, your grace, your strength, your power will invigorate, will strengthen them, will come into their lives, Father God. That everything that's been holding them down be broken off. Let constraints that have come upon them fall off. Let them arise up with strength. Let them move forward with strength. Let them be encouraged today to keep serving you, to keep running the race, to keep moving forward and overcome life's challenges because you have made each one an overcomer. I speak the blessing of God. I speak the triumph of God into their lives. I declare that they are overcomers. They overcome whatever adversity they are facing. They overcome whatever challenges that they are facing, God. That they are supernaturally graced, supernaturally strengthened, and supernaturally empowered by Christ's grace, Christ's strength, and Christ's power working in their lives. So let them be encouraged today, Father. And I thank you in Jesus' name, amen, amen. And we'd love to hear from you. Take a moment, please, to send us a test, test, send us a word, uh, testimony. Uh, you can email to testimony at apcw.org. Let us know how you've been ministered to through uh, today's service. And please share this message with as many people as you can. May they know that there is Christ's grace, Christ's strength, Christ's power available to them in the midst of adversity. May they also be encouraged. Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit continue with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, publication, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcbiblecollege.org. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play Store.